Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. That Manic Pixie Dream Girl, if she were real, she would have probably borderline personality disorder. This is a little bit of a weird writing video. It's prompted by, uh, of course, the last live stream we discussed uh, different kinds of character archetypes. And there's this trope of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl that occurs in a lot of um, romantic comedies. It's a female character, a female romantic interest that um, whisks a male character on to some adventure, um, initiates romance in such a way that it breaks him out of his shell, makes him escape from his mundane life. Um, this is a trope of, again, romantic comedies and comedies that are, I guess, more directed towards a male, aud uh, a male audience. And I think it represents a certain kind of male fantasy, which is the fantasy of somebody being active on you as a romantic partner rather than what's typical, which is the male having to do virtually all of the initiation, at least early in a relationship. And also there's deeper male fantasies involved with this, um, with this trope. The fantasy of the woman being really interested in you and who you are and seeing deep down inside who you are and helping you to break out of your shell and to be, to like reach your potential. In a, in a meta way, the Manic Pixie Dream Girl causes the male character to ascend to be the man that she wants him to be, which is not realistic at all. It's that's purely a fantasy because that doesn't that kind of thing really doesn't happen in real life. As we were talking about this and um, we were looking at it on the Discord server, which if you're a member of the channel or Patreon or Kofi or whatever, um, you should have an ability to get on the Discord server. If not, message me and uh, you can hop on and join the discussion. And I made the remark that, you know, if this person were real, I think she would have borderline personality disorder. And um, Hardwick, that's his handle uh, in the comments and on the Discord server. Uh, he went and looked it up. And yeah, there's a lot of people who actually have borderline personality disorder complaining about being compared to a manic pixie dream girl, being called a manic pixie dream girl which they find dehumanizing, as you might imagine, that you exist solely for the benefit of another person, like you exist to help to make the man into something. And that's the story uh, role of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Uh, she's a foil for a passive and boring uh, male character. And you can imagine that this is probably a common fantasy for a lot of first world men because they have a life that's full of mundane tasks and routine and is exciting to have the idea of an adventure and also exciting to have the idea of somebody coming in and sort of saving them from the boring life and helping them to be the exciting person that they wish they were inside. Um, I think one of the, you know, there's elements that you can see in lots of different movies that have this female character type, even in Tombstone, where you have the actor uh, kind of getting Wyatt Earp to not be such a dour fellow and to leave his wife. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of a manic pixie dream girl. But the example that I thought of immediately was Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim, Scott Pilgrim um, versus the, the world or whatever. The, there's a comic and then there was a movie. And she's always changing her hair color. Uh, and that to me, when I thought of her, that's what I thought. I was like, this is like an idealization of somebody with borderline personality disorder. She's there, then she's not there. Uh, her hair color is always changing. And we're not really thinking about somebody who has BB, BPD. Why would they be like dyeing their hair all the time? And it has to do with a fragile sense of self. They're actually suffering. They're not exciting. They don't want to be exciting. Rather, they have impulses and really, really intense emotions that are hard to deal with. And if you're a normal or typical person, it's not... It, and you are approaching other people assuming they're typical, here comes this person, it can be really explosive in real life. It, it can be like a romantic comedy sort of fantasy happening right before your eyes. But what's always missing from the movies is how that person would be in real life. What would they be like in two weeks, in two months? That's when the reality of uh, dealing with borderline personality disorder comes into play. And I've known several people who have BPD, and I've known people who've had to try to have relationships with people with BPD. And it's very, very challenging because there's this cycle of um, like idealization, like, I love this person, this is the best person ever. And then it's 
followed by like a crash where all of those feelings somehow evaporate and you don't understand why you felt that about that person. There may be really impulsive behavior because of that uh, extreme emotion. And then later it evaporates and you don't, like you may feel intense shame if you have BPD about impulsive decisions you might've made. Not only that, but you won't understand why you made the decisions, like it, they were made by a different person. So the dying of the hair is an outward sign of who am I? I don't have a firm identity and my identity feels uncertain. I'm not certain of who I am. I need to discover who I am. I need to find myself. Um, those are things that uh, might be associated with someone with BPD. And I see them in this character. So what you see is like no normal person in real life would just exist to fly around and be erratic and be impulsive. Rather, their life would be full of mundane, normal tasks that they have to do in order to live just like the rest of us. Um, so like I had a friend who was in a relationship with someone with BPD. Well, it was a really explosive uh, romance and he was like blown away by it. like, you know, the intense emotion. This person like loves you. They love everything about you. You know, they are, you know, there's maybe an intense like sexual element that happens. And then in this case that I'm thinking of, the person just ghosted him. She disappeared. She wouldn't even pick up the phone. He had to break up with her. They were supposedly boyfriend and girlfriend. He had to break up with her via text message because all of those feelings evaporated suddenly and she, and she had to felt intense shame. Like she had introduced him to her family. You know, she was probably really suffering, right, is my point. But it's, it's behavior that is really strange if you are coming in as a typical person. And uh, you just, it's not going to make any sense to you. It's, that's why it's like pretty much impossible to have a, a relationship with somebody with BPD, especially if they're not like getting treatment or anything for it. Um, so yeah, I bring this up because a lot of times when we think about characters, if you start to think deeply about um, who they would be in real life, the fantasy starts to break down a lot. Think of James Bond. James Bond would be someone that... Um, you know, might have, might be someone you wouldn't actually want to know in real life. They might have antisocial personality disorder or something like that. They're deeply manipulative. They have an extreme distance from, from their own feelings, right? They're not a, uh, they're a person that doesn't feel guilt or shame about doing certain things, right? Like James Bond is maybe attractive to women because he's got the impulsivity and the danger and the things that the man in the romantic comedy wants to have in himself and the Manic Pixie Dream Girl helps him have those things. Um, but James Bond just has him. But if you were to have a James Bond in real life, it might be, you know, it'd be like living with someone with narcissistic personality. It might be just like hell. Like it might be terrible to try to live with someone like James Bond. So there's a difference between our fantasies and what characters uh, actually would be in real life like a fantasy exists to fulfill uh, the emotional needs of the reader and uh, usually the reader kind of looking at a character as and, and empathizing with that character thinking about what they it would be like if they were that character and therefore experiencing um, the fantasy right fantasies exist to fulfill the emotional needs of the reader they don't exist to be realistic or to represent real life. Because the truth is, if you had, you know, if you met a Ramona Flowers, yeah, she might seem intensely interesting to you. But the reality of trying to have a relationship with that person might be hellish because she has borderline personality disorder and is like deeply disturbed, perhaps. Um, those sorts of things, like, and that's why I think of Scott Pilgrim as like, this is like an idealization of of BPD, like you're only f trying to focus on the good parts and you're not really understanding that that person might be like experiencing horrible suffering because of behavior that they feel is like out of control, that they can't control their own behavior. So yeah, there's fantasies and realities. You notice that women's romance novels will have, uh, ah, which hot guy am I going to pick? It's like, like that, like that ever happens in real life. Um, or, you know, male fantasies of having two women fighting over him. It's like, when does that really happen in real life? It's it's not a very realistic thing. It's a fantasy about what your emotional needs are. So the female picking between two men who desire her and having that selection fantasy is about, I am so valuable and attractive that men will kill for me. I wish I was, right? Instead, I have to settle for men who are 
average, right? The male fantasy. I'm so, so attracted that multiple women, like I can have a harem of women. That's why the male fantasy is a harem. It's like I'm so high status that I can be, you know, I can basically be polygamous. That's the male fantasy for that. So that they have like all the things they want. Variety plus access to sex plus status that gets you more variety and more access to sex. So male fantasies and female fantasies kind of shoot past each other based on what the emotional needs of the of the um, viewer or the reader are. And so in the case of romantic comedies that have a manic pixie dream girl, it's more about the male fantasy of escaping the mundane and becoming a better man, becoming the kind of man that the manic pixie dream girl would actually want, which is kind of a reversal of how real life actually would end up working. And it's definitely different from how real life with a kind of person like that, a person that had that kind of explosive attraction to you and then impulsivity would then have the negative cycle that happens later and that would be really hard to deal with. So keep that stuff in mind when you're thinking about tropes and you're thinking about characters that they may serve to fulfill a viewer or a reader's fantasy and they're really not would not work out in real life they just would not be something or someone that you would uh, be able to just easily end up having a romantic relationship with so anyway leaving your thoughts down below about the manic pixie dream girl or anything else borderline personality disorder or maybe you know the fact that any kind of character especially a foil character because the Manic Pixie Dream Girl is not the protagonist. She's a secondary character. She's a romantic interest character for a male character and is therefore a foil to him like what most B story romances are. The the female or the male character, they're, they start off as a strong foil and then they resolve their differences in some way to be able to matriculate a romance. The male character is boring. The female character is exciting. The male character has to be more exciting. They can matriculate the romance, right? The uh, If you're going to reverse it and it's a female character and a male character, Right. <clears throat> the male character is too wild and rebellious and he has to be tamed. And then the female can matriculate the relationship after using his his masculinity, basically taking his masculinity and capturing it and turning it outward into the world for her benefit. That's the way that, you know, those sorts of fantasies end up working for males and females respectively. Um, so anyway, you, leave me your thoughts about those below. It's about a, a certain kind of story writing. And I think it's important to just think of you know, this wasn't, this isn't really real life, right? This is something that's for the reader and wouldn't be very realistic. And if we're going to get really realistic, we'd end up writing a very different story from a romantic comedy. You'd end up writing something that is a lot more dramatic because the reality would be so much harder to deal with. So take it easy and I'll see you all next time. Of course, if you join my Patreon and any other way to support me, you get keys to prolific creativity help you establish and maintain your creative process to finish your projects and get them out. And I just put out a live album. It's already on the channel, but you can you can get it at zillonline.com. That's just like two hours of, you know, the most liked live stuff I did last year on the music channel. So let me know what you think down below about this topic, and I will see you all next time.